It is no secret that currently BioWare's reputation is in something of a rut after a number of failed launches with Mass Effect Andromeda. While not the worst game ever per se by Mass Effect standards, it just felt short in many ways. And a big part of it was technical issues that permeated the title. And then there's Anthem, which also faced similar issues. It somehow turned out worse than Mass Effect Andromeda despite being developed by the A-Team and... That game also faced its host of technical issues. And a big contributor to these technical issues is the Frostbite engine, which has become something of a curse for BioWare, as its usage has created a number of issues for a studio that's used to making open-world RPGs and this expansive games that the Frostbite engine was just not meant to handle. That engine was initially designed for Battlefield, and then they essentially had to remake tools from scratch in order to fit RPGs like Dragon Age Inquisition and then Mass Effect Andromeda. And then with Anthem, it was an online game to boot, which complicated things even further. So the Frostbite has just been incredibly detrimental for the studio, which is why I am pleased to see that we might very well be getting a situation where Bioware is going to start using Unreal Engine instead for some of their next games, namely Mass Effect. So this is an article from New Satellite Games Beat or Venture Beat. This is an article written by Jeff Grubb, and he noticed that Bioware is currently hiring, and part of that involves hiring people who are familiar with Unreal Engine. So here is the job listing in question. It's for the role of technical director, and this is specifically for the Mass Effect franchise. If you scroll down here, you'll find a little bit that reads, you will be the most senior engineering lead on the next installment in Bioware's acclaimed Mass Effect franchise. And then to layer on top of that, it is required required for individuals who are applying for this job to have experience with Unreal Engine 4 Plus, or at least it's stipulated that that's an asset. Such a requirement may very well suggest that Bioware's next Mass Effect entry, which they have teased with a trailer in the not-so-distant past, will be using Unreal Engine for its creation, which, if you ask me, is fantastic news. For those who don't know, the original trilogy of Mass Effect games, which is featured in its entirety in the Legendary Edition, all of that was created using Unreal Engine. I believe it was Unreal Engine 3 that they used way back when. And while these games aren't technically perfect, they certainly weren't at the level of Mass Effect Andromeda in terms of technical issues, save for maybe Mass Effect 1, which was rough around the edges. But even then, you know, Mass Effect 1 just felt like it had better animations than Mass Effect Andromeda did at launch, which was crazy to think about. Just everything, the way the face moved, the way the eyes moved just looked more natural. And one of the well-known issues with Frostbite was how they had to remake the animation rig for it because the engine just wasn't designed for the requirements that a game like Mass Effect Andromeda required. Another game that utilized Unreal Engine to great effect was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This, I believe, used Unreal Engine 4, and this game also had a few technical issues here and there, but for the most part, the game looked really good, it ran well, and it played well, and there's a lot of fanfare surrounding this title that, for the most part, launched pretty successfully. And this game seems to indicate that EA is being more open about utilizing Unreal Engine. The reason EA wouldn't want to is because if they use Frostbite because it's their own internal in-house engine, they don't have to pay royalty fees, they don't have to give a cut of the revenue to another company, whereas when you're using Unreal Engine because it is developed by Epic Games, when you ship a game that utilized Unreal Engine as its core engine, you have to give Epic Games a revenue cut of that and you have to license the engine. And that makes it ideal for companies to build their own engine so they can generate 100% of the profits. But if that comes at the expense of the quality of the game because an in-house engine wasn't designed to build a certain type of game, then it's just not worth it. It's better to pay that royalty fee to whoever designed just a better, more all-encompassing engine like Unreal Engine then have the quality of your game suffer, have word about that spread, and the sales of your game suffer. So the hope is that this job listing potentially indicating that the next Mass Effect will utilize Unreal Engine 5 can mark as indication that EA and Bioware have learned their lesson from trying to 
use Frostbite with Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem and are thinking more long term and are finally getting the picture that Frostbite is just not working out for Bioware. And just to give you an idea for what a pain in the ass using Frostbite was for both Mass Effect Andromeda and for Anthem, I'll take you back to those two Kotaku Jason Schreier articles that investigated the trouble development of Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem. When it comes to Mass Effect Andromeda, the article cites how one of Bioware's biggest obstacles was the Frostbite engine, which is cited to be one of the most powerful engines out there, but also one of the hardest to use. It had never been used to make role-playing games. DICE made first-person shooters like Battlefield with it, and so it had to be repurposed for Dragon Age Inquisition, and then it had to be re-repurposed for Andromeda and also for Anthem. The engine wasn't capable of performing the basic functions you'd expect from a role-playing game like managing party members or keeping track of a player's inventory. BioWare's coders had to build almost everything from scratch, which added to development time, which is why it took so long for Mass Effect Andromeda to ship, why it took so long for Anthem to ship. Although with Anthem specifically, a lot of that had to do with pre-production issues where they were just too indecisive, management wasn't up to par, but also the technical issues certainly delayed things further. It didn't allow them to execute on ideas that they wanted. Engineers on Andromeda had to design many of their own features from scratch, including their animation rig, which is why the animation at launch for that game was so rough even worse than the original trilogy, which are games from, you know, however many years ago, very old games. While describing Frostbite, one top developer on Mass Effect Andromeda used the analogy of an automobile. Epic's Unreal Engine, the developer said, is like an SUV, capable of doing lots of things, but unable to go at crazy high speeds. So what this developer is saying is that Unreal Engine is a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Though I feel like that notion is getting more antiquated, especially with the release of Unreal Engine 5, whose capabilities look out of of this world and we have seen plenty of Unreal Engine games launch and be launched really effectively in both scale and fidelity and Unreal Engine is flexible but also it feels like it can go at high speeds maybe not as high speed as an engine specifically designed for a certain type of game but high speed enough that you know it certainly is a better option than Frostbite to make a game like Mass Effect or Anthem at the very least. And then Unity Engine is described as a compact car, small, weak, and easy to fit any place you'd like. And finally, Frostbite is a sports car. Not even a sports car, a Formula One car. When it does something well, it does it extremely well for the purpose that it's intended, but when it doesn't do something, it really doesn't do something. Frostbite is so very specific in its purpose, and it's so good at doing that one thing that outside of that, it's just going to struggle. As one of the developers put it, when you're building something that the engine is not made for, this is where it becomes difficult. Designing the large maps of Andromeda's planets became a struggle on Frostbite. And beyond the scale of the maps being an issue, other struggles included the streaming system, the save system, and various action RPG mechanics that Andromeda needed in order to work. A developer straight up said that it's been painful to work with Frostbite engine and how the pain started with Dragon Age Inquisition and continued with Mass Effect Andromeda and that would continue with Anthem. Speaking of Anthem, plenty of complaints about having to use Frostbite to make Anthem in the trouble development of Anthem reporting by Kotaku and Jason Schreier. A former Bioware employee described Frostbite as being full of razor blades. That's definitely a description you don't want to hear about a game engine or about anything, really. It is emphasized that by using Frostbite, EA would save a whole lot of money in licensing fees. But that ended up backfiring. Instead, what happened was they used Frostbite. They created a game that barely held itself together that was falling apart at the seams which culminated in Anthem dying and EA not being able to monetize the game, them losing a whole lot of money from disappointing sales and disappointing monetization. Whereas if they would have used an engine that was capable of supporting a game like Anthem that would have made developers' lives easier, maybe they could have shipped just a much better game and Anthem could have still been alive today. And trying to save money short term by utilizing Frostbite instead of licensing a third-party engine better suited for a project like Anthem they ended up achieving the complete opposite by losing 
a whole lot of money because it all came at the expense of the integrity of the project itself. And then with Anthem came the added layer of having to use Frostbite to build an online-only action game, which Bioware had never done before, which led to a host of new problems for Bioware designers, artists, and programmers. The engine is apparently poorly documented, and a developer was quoted with, nobody you actually work with designed it, so you don't know why this thing works the way it does, why this is named the way it is. And the Frostbite engine not supporting or not not featuring the elements required to realize Anthem's full ambition led to a lot of features being cut. Throughout those early years in development, the Anthem team realized that many of the ideas it originally conceived would be difficult, if not impossible, to create on Frostbite. So they had these cool ideas, but they just couldn't execute because the technology didn't allow for it because they were confined to Frostbite, an engine that was meant for something very specific and for it to do more. It would just require so much retooling, redoing, building from scratch. And so they started cutting back on key elements like environmental and survival features that that device for Anthem. And then further down the article, even today, Bioware developers say Frostbite can make their jobs exponentially more difficult. Here's a quote of someone saying, I would say the biggest problem I had with Frostbite was how many steps you needed to do something basic. It's really hard to make a game when you have to fight your own tool set all of the time. And then scrolling further down, you'll find the article noting how one thing about Frostbite would always remain consistent from Dragon Age Inquisition to Andromeda to Anthem. It made everything take longer than anyone thought it should. Made worse by the fact that at one point EA actually pulled Frostbite programmers from Bioware because they wanted to prioritize FIFA, which didn't help matters. But mainly the core issue lies in the fact that Frostbite is just not an efficient engine for what Bioware wants to do. Using the vehicle analogy, Bioware wanted to go off-road, but they were given a Formula One car not intended for that to do it, and it was just incredibly difficult to navigate with. A game engine is supposed to provide the tools that will give developers the most freedom to fully realize their ideas, but with Frostbite, the more you read about it, the more it sounds like it constrains developers, it limits developers' capabilities to realize the full vision of a full-scale RPG like Mass Effect Andromeda or a full-scale action RPG like Anthem, an online action RPG. It is just a tool that limits, whereas Unreal feels like a tool that really allows you to do whatever you want, and maybe it isn't a master of any one thing, but it's good enough at everything it does that it absolutely does feel like this is the best option going forward with Mass Effect 5. Frostbite has proven disastrous for Andromeda. Unreal has proven to work well for the original trilogy. And maybe having a technology that's set, that's easier to use, that isn't a pain in the ass to get basic stuff done, will ease the pipeline of development for Mass Effect 5. In turn, that will accelerate the process. It'll allow developers to get more work done in less time and to actually not be limited by their own tools. And therefore, I think we're going to get a better game. And while there's a lot more involved to a good game than just the engine, like story, gameplay, sound, graphics, you name it, the fact remains that the foundation of any game is the engine. That's the, the the foundation from which you're building your game on. And if the foundation is rocky as it was with Frostbite, then you're going to get a very shaky product at the end of development. So this shift to Unreal Engine has me a bit more optimistic about future prospects for the Mass Effect franchise. I don't know what the future holds for Bioware and whether they can bring it back, but at the very least, using a better engine will help. Or at least that's one man's take on the possibility that Mass Effect 5 may transition back to Unreal Engine like the original trilogy did. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this prospect. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.